Welcome to the Fountas and Pinnell LLI Reading Record app. With this app and an iPad stylus, you can purchase and code reading records for the Fountas and Pinnell LLI systems. You can also analyze and score the reading records and the comprehension conversations as you assess students to determine their progress. To use this app, you must be a subscriber to the online data management system. Once you have subscribed to the ODMS, you should set up your groups there. You can then log into the app and wirelessly sync to move the group data over to the iPad. The first screen you'll encounter is the student profile screen. Before you can use the app, you need to get the reading records for the LLI systems you use. Tapping on the shopping cart icon takes you to the place where you can purchase the reading records. Simply flip through the choices and when the module you wish to purchase is showing, tap on the buy button. Now you can begin to assess readers. On the Student Profile screen, tap on the Group, and then on the student's name. Then tap on New Conference to start. On the New Conference screen, you first select the Assessment Week from the drop-down menu, which lists the start dates of all the weeks of that LLI group's sessions. Then you select the LLI system that you are using from the drop-down menu. You must have purchased the reading records for that system from the shopping cart in order to load them. Then you select the lesson number from the drop-down that matches the lesson you are teaching. The lesson numbers are scrollable. At this point, the cover of the book the child will read pops up, as well as the book title and level. Tap on Start New Conference to begin. The introduction screen appears. Before the child reads the book, you read the title and introduction to the child, then tap on Next. Here you see the text of the book. Page numbers are on the left. If you wish to record the reader, tap on Record, then tap on Start to start the recorder and the timer. Ask the reader to begin reading. To code a reading behavior, you use a combination of writing in the text box and then tapping on a word in the text and swiping or gesturing in a direction that matches the one you want, as indicated in the gestural menu in the upper left of the screen. A little practice will help you quickly get the feel for how long you need to hold the stylus on a word to select it before gesturing. It is selected once it has a blue highlight. As you see, you can move your stylus in a circle and pop-up text will indicate what region you are in, as will a dot on the gestural menu. When you are in the correct region, lift your stylus and the behavior will be recorded. You will quickly get used to swiping in any required direction. The behaviors on the gestural menu are insert, for when a reader inserts a word or words between words in the text, substitution, for substitutions of incorrect words for words in the text, process, for when a reader processes a word by sounding it out, omit, for omitted words, SC, for self-corrections, and T, for when you tell a reader what a word is. Under the text box are three buttons for indicating repetitions and for making notes. The clear button clears the text box of what you've written. Let's try coding each of the behaviors. First, insertions. To code insertions, you write the inserted word into the text box, then tap on the word before the insertion occurred and swipe up. This places the inserted word after the word you tapped on. If a child inserts another word in the same place, perform the same functions. Each inserted word counts as one error. For substitutions, write the substituted word or words into the text box, then tap on the typed word and swipe up and to the right towards sub. This places what you have written above the word and turns the word red. Each word in the text that has a word or words substituted for it counts as one error. Now processing. Write into the text box the processing that the reader did, then tap on the typed word and gesture to the right. The typed word turns orange and the written text appears above the word. This does not count as an error. You use the process to code any behaviors that do not add up to an error. So if a student appeals for a word and you say to the child, you try it, and the child then reads the word correctly, you would write these behaviors in the box and gesture toward process. No error is added to the count. Omissions are coded by tapping on a word and gesturing downward. The word turns red and a line appears over it. Each omitted word counts as one error. 
When a child corrects her errors, add an SC in the text box before gesturing to the left. This will place what you have written above the word as well as turning the word green. If you tell a child the word because the child is not attempting the word at all and is stuck, then select the word and gesture up and to the left towards T. This places a T next to the word, turns the word red, and adds an error to the error count. If you want to indicate a told while also indicating other behaviors, then write the other behaviors in the box before tapping and swiping towards T. Repetitions are marked using one of two behavior buttons. If a reader repeats one word, you select the word and then tap on R one word. This places a pink line over the word. If a child repeats the word again, you simply tap on R one word again if the word is still selected, or select the word again and tap on R one word. This adds the number two to the end of the repetition line. You can continue to add numbers in the same way. To indicate the repetition of more than one word, tap on the first or last word in the repeated phrase, then tap on R words. Then tap on the word at the other end of the repeated phrase and tap on R words again. If the phrase is repeated more than once, repeat the process. To indicate when behaviors have happened during a repetition of a phrase, use the text box to write the behavior and then draw an arrow down next to it. If you are adding to previous behaviors, tap on the typed word first to bring up the previous handwritten text and simply add to it. For omitted words, if a reader does something else on a repetition, you would write the omit line first into the text box and then write the subsequent behavior before swiping according to the final behavior. This way you see what the behaviors were and also retain the one error in the error count. You can embed a note in the text at any point by tapping on a word, writing in the text box, and tapping on notes. These notes will be viewable on the PDF of the reading record. Undo in the upper left corner of the coding screen undoes each noted behavior starting with the most recent. In the upper right corner of the coding screen, a hard button will flash when the child has reached the number of errors that constitute a hard book, without taking into account the comprehension score. So for levels A through K, the hard button will flash when the child has an accuracy rate of below 90%, and for levels L through Z, the button will flash when the child has a rate below 95%. When the hard button flashes, you can choose whether to end the assessment and count the reading as a hard reading, or to go on and finish the assessment. If you choose to end it, you simply tap on the hard button, and then you are taken to the assessment report. Tap on End on the left toolbar to end an assessment. Then tap on Score to move to the Scoring and Analysis section. Here you will score fluency. There is a key on the right side of the page to help you determine a score. You may also type notes on the student's fluency here, then tap on Next. The Comprehension Conversation screens now appear, with prompts followed by key understandings that the prompts may elicit. Tap on the checkmark button next to the key understandings that were fully voiced and use the comment feature to note any additional understandings or partial understandings that the student demonstrated. Give the student a score. Again, use the key to help you determine what score to give. On the final Comprehension Conversation screen, an extra point is available for you to award a student who has come up with one or more unique and valuable understandings of the text. You can tap on the Save Close button at this point and come back to finish scoring and analyzing this reading at a later time. In this next section of the app, you will analyze errors and self-corrections. You can also play the audio of an error by clicking on the Play button on the left of the screen and moving the indicator to find the applicable place in the text. For the analyses, one by one, you select each red error, except omissions and insertions, which are not analyzed, and select each green self-correction, and you analyze why the child behaved as they did. Was it based on meaning, M, language structure, S, or visual features, V? To analyze an error, select the word in the text by tapping on it to highlight it. A box appearing in the lower left part of the screen will give you the ability to turn the error off, not counting it as an error, and also the ability to analyze the error by tapping into the MSV boxes and then tapping on Save. If a child substituted more than one word for any given word in the text, you will analyze each additional word and then tap on Save again. 
To delete any analysis, simply swipe over it from right to left and tap on Delete. Do the self-corrections in the same way. First analyze the error that occurred before the self-correction, and then analyze the self-correction. For all self-corrections, the error default is off. The Code Analyze button on the upper right corner of the screen moves you between a screen where you can code additional behaviors that you perhaps heard while playing the recording, and the screen where you can analyze them. If you would like to remove a behavior that is marked for any word, simply select the word and tap on Remove in the upper right corner. This removes all behavioral indications for that word. When you tap on the Next button, you go to the Writing About Reading Scoring page. This screen allows you to write a summary statement about this reading. Tap into the text box to bring up the keyboard to type your statement. Then tap on Next to go to the assessment report. This screen shows all of the data about the reading that has just been coded, scored, and analyzed. A graph shows the number of errors and self-corrections split up by those analyzed to be M, S, or V. Three summary statements will also appear that are based on the reading assessment data and that will help you to move towards next steps for instruction for this student. You can tap on the View PDF button to open a PDF of the reading record in your native PDF viewer. From here, you can choose to print it by tapping on the symbol in the upper right corner or to open it in another app that will allow you to email it to yourself, depending on the apps that you have installed on your iPad. Then you can return to the app by tapping in the upper part of the screen and tapping on the Done button that appears. This PDF will also move over to the ODMS when you sync. You can tap on Mail PDF to email the recording form to yourself. The Done button in the lower right corner of the assessment report finishes the assessment and takes you back to the student profile screen. The app will sync to the online data management system after you have finished each assessment and it will indicate the synced assessments with a green check mark. Any unsynced assessments will have a red X next to them. If you are not accessing a wireless network, you can sync the assessment later by tapping on the Sync icon and selecting Sync Assessments up to ODMS. In this same drop-down menu, you can select Sync Students Down to iPad to bring any new classes or students over from the ODMS. All assessments that are unable to be sent to the ODMS for any reason can be viewed by tapping on View All Unsynchronized Assessments. This brings up a screen that shows the data for the unsynchronized assessments in case you need to manually enter the data into the ODMS. Here you can also access the PDF of the reading record. The particular sync problem for each assessment can be viewed by tapping on the exclamation point in the last column. If the sync issue cannot be resolved and you manually enter the data into the ODMS, you can change your sync status for an assessment to a yellow check mark by tapping on the X in the second to last column and then answering yes. You can also delete the assessment if you wish by tapping into the trash can column. Tapping on the wrench symbol will allow you to turn off and on the indicators that confirm your swiping direction during coding. If you saved some of the assessments in a conference without tapping on the done button on the assessment report screen, you can return to those assessments, now shown in red, and finish them by tapping on the Resume icon for the applicable assessment conference on the student profile screen.